Hello advanced humans, welcome to our next topic in the advanced course, which is trigonometric functions. So the good news about this topic is that most of these concepts we would have explored before in year 11, but uh, the bad news is that if you remember year 11, some of these were pretty, um, pretty tough. But we'll see how we go. Before we talk more on that, here is a warm up question on calculus. I want you to find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals cos 2x at the point where x equals pi on 6. This is from the HSC paper two years ago, and it's a three mark question. Let's see how you go. Okay, so if we're finding the equation of a tangent, first thing we need to do is differentiate our function. So we'll take the derivative of cos 2x, cos differentiates to minus sine 2x, and then we're multiplying by 2 because that's the derivative of the function inside the, inside the function, I guess. Yeah. All right, now we substitute in our value of x equals pi on six, and that'll give us the, the gradient of the tangent at this point. All right, so we're subbing in pi on six, so we get two pi on six, which is pi on three, and now sine of pi on three, that's sine 60, which of course is root three on two. So we're doing minus two times root three on two, so we get minus three, and that is our gradient. So now from this point, we have a Gradients. We also need a point on the line, so we can use our point gradient formula. The question only gave us the x value, so to find the y value of the actual point we're looking at, we need to sub this into our original function. So we'll find cos of 2 times pi on 6, so again that's pi on 3, and cos of 60 degrees is a half. So putting that all together, we have our gradients of negative root 3, and we have our point here. Now we use our point gradient formula and we substitute in our information, gradient here and our x and y coordinates here. And now this one doesn't tie out very nicely because we've got thirds and we've got radians and pi's and everything floating around. So we're just gonna go into y equals mx plus b form. So we'll expand out this bracket. I'll just add the half across. And then if you wanna be a little bit fancy, you can even add these two fractions together. And there is a pretty decent answer. You're not going to get a really nice answer, so there's not much point putting it into general form. But if you wanted to, I'm not going to stop you. All right, well done if you got something looking similar to that. So to start off today, we're just doing a recap of basically all the graphing techniques we looked at in the trig topic. So we're going to call this one transformation of trigonometric functions. Very exciting. Okay, here is our first one. We are going to sketch the function y equals 2 sine of x minus pi on 6. Alright, so to get us there, first thing we need to know is that the graph of sine x looks like this. Okay, if you're watching this video and you can't remember what sine, cos and tan look like, you need to pause and go do 5 minutes of study, because if you can't do that, then this is going to uh, be lost on you unfortunately. So you need to know your basic trig graphs. Now, if this is y equals sine x, if we did y equals 2 sine x, it's going to change our amplitude, which means our peak, from 1 to 2. So we're going to vertically stretch our graph by a factor of 2. Okay, and now what's happening here with the minus pi on 6, that is shifting, or translating, as they call it. It is translating our graph pi on 6 units. I want you to think, are we going to go to the left or are we going to the right? If you are yelling at your screen right now, we are going to the right, you are correct. So it's the exact same shape, but instead of our intercepts being zero and pi to start off, they're gonna to shift to pi on six and seven pi on six, if you wanted to label them. But that is the idea, okay? So the number at the front affects our amplitude, it's a vertical stretch, and adding or minusing a number inside the function is going to shift us uh, right or left. If this was a plus pi on six, we would have gone to the left. All right, groovy. For the next one, we're gonna look at the graph of y equals minus cos of three x plus one. So we'll approach in the same way. We'll start with our, our basic function for cosine x, the exact same shape as sine x, except it starts at one and then at two pi, which is one as well, okay? So first of all, let's think about what this number inside the, inside the cosine is doing okay what we looked at last year is that this number inside here affects how often your graph cuts through the x-axis which we call the period all right your basic cos function has a period of 2 pi because that's how long it takes for the graph to start again and repeat okay 
So we looked at last year how if we do a two in here, it's going to sort of contract our graph and make it go through twice as often. Okay, so it, so it halves the period. So the simple formula that is worth remembering is that if, if you have cos or sine of nx, where n is a constant, your period is gonna be two pi divided by n. So in this case, our n is three, so our period will be two pi on three, which means we aren't going to repeat every two pi units, oh, sorry, every two pi radians, we are going to repeat every one third of two pi radians. Okay, so it's going to look like this. So now we have three times as many uh, repeating cycles in the same time frame, okay? We're just gonna zoom in today and just focus on down here. So our, our period, like I said, is two pi on three. That's when we are uh, back to where we started at one. Okay, so that's the hard part. Now we gotta think about what does the negative at the front do to this? Okay, what this is gonna do is it's gonna turn all our y values up here into negative y values. And it's gonna turn all our negative y values into positive y values. So everything is being flipped across this x axis. It's gonna look like this. Okay, same shape, but upside down. And now last, we're just gonna do the plus one, which is gonna take our, because it's outside of the function, we're taking the whole function, shifting it up by one. So that is a vertical shift by one unit. All right. So the general advice for handling these is typically you wanna do your multiplications first, so your stretches. So worry about your amplitude and your period first, and then do your shifting either left or right or up and down last is the best way to approach it. All right, cool. For the next one, we're gonna sketch 10 now. This one we're gonna do 10 of negative x on two. So again, we need our basic function for 10, which looks like this. These are our tan lines. Uh, so this is this is periodic, but it has a period of pi now. Okay, so here from zero to pi, it's repeating. I didn't put on the graph, but as we've seen before, it does have asymptotes, so lines that it doesn't cross at uh, the multiples of pi on two. Oh, sorry, and then plus pi here. All right. The reason we're getting these asymptotes here is because we'll remember tan is just sine over cos, yeah. So wherever cos is equal to zero, you've got sine divided by zero, which you can't do. So the values where cosine is equal to zero is where you have your asymptotes, if you ever forget. Okay, cool, so there's our basic function. Now, if we had 10 of x on two, we're changing the period, okay? If I was doing 10 of two x, it would be contracting this, we'd be repeating twice as often, yeah, just like in the last one. With this one, because we are dividing by two, it's going to push us out by a factor of two. So it's gonna make us twice as fat, like this. Okay, notice that the axis is staying the exact same, roughly. I'm just going twice as fat. So now our asymptote isn't at minus pi on two and pi on two, it's being pushed out to pi and minus pi. Okay, cool. Now we've got to think about what this negative is doing. So when there was a negative at the front of the function, it flips us vertically, so it flips across the x-axis. When you are putting the x, oh, sorry, when you're putting the negative inside your function with the x, it's swapping the x values from positive to negative. So we are flipping across the y axis. So it's gonna turn around left to right and look like this. All right, so these are all tricks we've seen before. This, might, this is just a bit of a refresher. So we're all up to speed. Okay, now some more language. We have find the equation for a sine function with amplitude seven, period pi, phase of one unit to the right and center of minus three. All right, so here is our generic sine function with all our unknowns, okay? The K at the front represents the amplitude. Uh, the A, which is multiplying the, the function inside, is going to affect your period. Uh, the B in here is shifting us left or right, and the C, which is adding to the whole thing, is shifting us up or down. So as long as you know that, these questions can't really scare you too much. So for the amplitude of seven, like I said, we need the K at the front to be seven. That's pretty straightforward. Now for our period of pi, so remember our, our formula is two pi divided by, well, before we were calling it n, now we're calling it a, but it's the same thing. So we're doing two pi divided by a, and we want to get an answer of pi. So if we multiply this a across, or you can probably just say it needs to be two, it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, so our a needs to be two. That has now changed our period from what it usually is, which is two pi. It's now halved it to pi. Okay, all right, shifting us, so a phase of one unit to the right, so a shift of one to the right, so we need to have a minus one here. 
Okay, so we're gonna do, instead of two times x, we're gonna do two times x minus one. This is shifting the x to the right by one unit. And now center minus three, well your typical sine function oscillates between one and minus one, which means that its center is zero. So if we just do a minus three here, it's going to shift the whole thing down by, by three, and that'll be our new center. Okay, so if they're asking you for a new center, that's just what needs to be shifted uh, the whole graph up and down by, okay? So now instead of going between seven and minus seven, it's gonna go between uh, four and minus 10, which has an average of minus three. All right, very good. For the last one for the advanced guys, we are going to do what we just did, but in reverse. So here is a transform trig function. I want you to use your words, kind of like what was done in this question here. And I want you to describe what transformations have been done to get from y equals cos x to get to this disgusting mess. Now there is a bit of a trick to this question. Uh, I wonder if you spotted already how this one is written in a more confusing way compared to the last one, compared to this. Can you spot the difference? The problem is that this two is multiplying with the x and it hasn't been factorized. See how in this last one we have two outside of x minus one? So a common mistake for this one would be people say, oh, you've got a, uh, you're halving your period and you're shifting pi to the right. You're not actually, if you factor this two out and you write it properly, it looks like this. And now you can see that you are halving your period, but then you're shifting pi over two to the right. Okay, so just be careful because that is a really tricky way that this can uh, stump you up. You just gotta make sure you're taking this constant outside of both. So it looks like, you're just trying to make it look like this generic form right here. Okay, because then you've got all your, all your information right in front of you, as long as you know what these four constants represent graphically. All right, so now we've got it like that. We can see that we have a three out the front, so we have, a, we have an amplitude of three now instead of one. We can see our period, because we have the two out the front, we're gonna have two pi divided by two, so we'll have pi as our period instead of two pi. We can see we are shifting to the right again, okay? If this was a plus, we'd go to the left. It's a minus, so we're going to the right. We're going to the right by pi on two units. Our center is now being shifted up and down, or sorry, being shifted up by pi, so that's our new center. And there's one last thing I'm missing, what is it? The negative out the front is flipping us upside down, so we are flipping across the, uh, across the x-axis. Okay, that's it. So that's the five types of ways we can alter tree graphs. And as long as you're aware of them, yeah, you should be fine. All right, that's where I'll say goodbye to the advanced students uh, for my class, the extension guys. We're gonna do a bit of practice with some extension one graphing very quickly. So uh, in our inverse functions topic, we looked at how we sketch uh, inverse sine, inverse cos, and inverse tan, which we occasionally call arc sine and etc. So we are going to find the equation of uh, arc sine, sine inverse. We're gonna reflect it in the y-axis. We're going to vertically stretch it by a factor of three and translate it one unit to the right. And then once we've done that, we'll do a quick sketch to see what we've done. All right, so here is our base function, our sine inverse, as we are familiar with, an old friend by now. Okay, so reflecting across the y-axis means we are we are flipping left and right, okay? It's across the y-axis, we're going left and right. So we are changing the x values, which is why we're gonna put a minus in the x value, okay? If I put a minus out the front, it would flip us up and down, which is across the x-axis. All right, we're gonna vertically stretch by a factor of three, which means we need to multiply by three out the front, okay? And now to translate one unit to the right, we'll do what we've done a few times now. We'll alter this x and we'll put a minus one in there. Make sure you got your brackets, so your negative is out the front. This is saying x, one unit to the right, but also multiplied by negative, which turns us uh, left and right. Okay, there is our function. Now we've got to follow this logic in the question to try and sketch that. So if I just gave you this equation here and said sketch it, that'd be pretty tricky, but once you've broken it down into its transformations, it becomes much simpler. We start off with our inverse sine sketch, and if you are a bit rusty on these, check your notes on just the basic sketches for sine inverse, cos inverse, and tan inverse. We're going from minus pi on two to pi on two between minus one and one. 
okay? And remember, the reason we only do this part is so that we get a function, so that we don't fail the, the vertical line test, okay? All right, first thing we'll do is we'll multiply by three. So before my top and tail was at minus pi on two and pi on two, we're gonna multiply these points by three. So we're stretching up and down by a factor of three. The X values are not changed yet, okay? Now we can flip them left and right to do our minus X, our flipping across the Y axis. So that was the flip there. And now we just need to move one unit to the right. So instead of having this, this inflection point at zero, we'll just have it at one. And there is your sketch, piece of cake. So once again, as long as you know what all these constants are doing and you know what your base function looks like, you're gonna get these right. Okay, cool, if that's making sense, you guys can have some more practice in exercises 401 and 402. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers, guys.